Jared Roser from Louisiana Verse, all y'all here with Anthony Rhodes Jr. from Anthony Rhodes Jr. Media, a little crossover between some of the things that we do, looking at this bracket that, Anthony, you, you released uh, kind of late last week, looking at who were some of the top wide receiving cores uh, at the high school level around New Orleans, all kind of started, as, as we've talked about the last few days, uh, with a little bit of back and forth between Holy Cross and Carr, and it comes down to a rivalry that everyone in the city knows very well, Edna Carr and Warren Easton, uh, West Bank and East Bank, and a damn near 50-50 split, another close one in virtual world, and Warren Easton uh, pulls out the the win and the the glove giveaway that was involved with this bracket, Uh, so you get to go back to to school safely and and whatnot. Take take me through some of it, man, because it was about as close as it could have possibly been. Yeah, so uh, I guess to start about the the final, the finale with Karn Easton, um, at the end, so when I first started, it was like Easton majority of the way for about the first two hours. Then literally from, I guess, like it flipped and then it was like a 60 to 30 car lead. Then it started to like narrow it down. But for majority, it was like 55 to 45. Um, I mean 60 to 40, but 55 to 45, like from – that point yesterday, like in the evening time, well, afternoon, I guess, until like uh, early this morning. And then like a lot of like Eastern people were uh, like, y'all vote for Eastern, y'all vote for Eastern. So it started to narrow up. But then Carr was like uh, 52 to 48 as far as percentage wise. And then it just got closer and closer. And it was tied for almost like going into like the last hour. Then it was um, Eastern started. Eastern took a small lead, and they just kept a small lead. But literally, Eastern won by two votes. So, like, it was very close. But like, it was a it was a good show, and I'm happy like that. People got involved, and people just participated in the in the vote. Got some good conversation going. But of course, we know the rivalry is um, Eastern and Cars, so it just added, I guess, a little bit more to it. Now it's going to give them a little bit more to prove on the field now. Yeah, I mean, right now there's so much less going on than we're used to at this time of year. And so I think a lot of people are excited to just get involved in any of the conversation as they can. And um, certainly that thing gets heated on the field all the time and it it can get heated on Twitter as well. And you mentioned it comes down to two votes in the finals, which was of about 900 votes. And you had thousands vote in the different rounds throughout the the past few days and, um, you know, up there pushing close to a thousand in the final round and ends up all coming down to a couple of votes, which is crazy. But when we talked on Monday about it, you said that you could see if the vote got lopsided, that Carr would probably come away. And if it ended up being a closer vote, you wouldn't be surprised if Easton pulled it out. And that's kind of exactly how it played out is, is Easton pulls out a razor thin margin. Uh, yes, sir. Most definitely. Like that's, I, I figured it would, it would go like that. Because like if I'm, like I like I like you just said, um, I if it was car, it would I mean if it was lopsided, it'd probably be car. But then when I saw the Eastern people started to get more engaged and involved because they have a lot of school pride, like it, it narrowed down that margin and it was a close one. I just knew that, like, I guess um in that case, like they try to take whatever people try to take whatever battles they can win and win those. So like. The Eastern people saw it as an opportunity and they just acted and just showed out more. I think I got, um, as far as from both sides, like the car, car didn't have as much, like, I guess, car interaction as far as, like, people who were necessarily, like, hardcore car or, like, the car students. We had, we I had some, but it wasn't, like, as many as Eastern to pull through in the late round. Like, like the way it was set up. It was like, all right, Easton, let them get it like the beginning, and then late it's like, okay, we're gonna flood. We're gonna make sure y'all vote for Easton, vote for Easton, vote for for Easton. So in the end, I think that's that's why Easton pulled through. You had ten great groups listed on that bracket at at the start of all of it, and so obviously it comes down to those two that have have battled for, uh, I mean, so many huge late season games, including state championship matchups uh, a couple of times in, in recent years. 
but some other great groups out there. Holy Cross, as I mentioned, was involved in kind of the onset of this when Colby Cage on the defensive side of the ball started talking up his guys, Jalen Johnson, Jaden Handy, and those guys. And I, I mentioned, as, as we've talked through some of this, Newman, I think, um, you know, a smaller school that, that really stands out to me as having a great group that is going to put up an awful lot of production uh, with Arch Manning spreading the ball around between A.J. Johnson, Kai Donaldson, uh, Pike Philbert, and, and even beyond that, the rest of that group. Uh, Helen Cox, a good group. St. Aug, we talked to, to Speedy Brooks about how hungry that group is. Uh, they, they were another semifinal team in the bracket. And the groups for Easton and Carr, Easton, the three that you had listed were Casey Kane, Dash Luke, Curtis Elmore, Carr had – Aaron Anderson, uh, Fat Pazon, and Donye Brooks. Did the fans get it right? What, what's your perspective on on how it turned out and and who you view as as the top group or what's kind of the rationale as you weigh them against one another and, and some different perspectives to take into that conversation? Um, so the way I put them against each other, I personally gave Carr the slight edge just by a little bit, just on the fact that they have – they have been proven, not discrediting Eastern at all, because like like you said, I go there, like that's my people. I, I know necessarily what they can do. But as far as from a like a media perspective and being like unbiased, like um I think last year, like if we're looking through uh last year's the way the year the season played out, like from the comments that I was reading, this and this, that was what like led people basically to their vote because like the Eastern people voted for Eastern, but like it was just like regular fans or just people who watch voted for Carr. But I guess what people don't realize about Eastern is the fact that like our quarterback was um a safety. So they didn't really have a quarterback and he had the best running back in the state, one of the best running backs in the country. So it's like they're gonna run the ball. And that was working. So the three receivers, Casey already in Curtis, Curtis was actually the fourth receiver last year, and we had uh, Jewel Holmes. I think that no, I think that's his last name. Uh, mm -hmm. we, had, we had him as our. Uh, he was actually the number one receiver, so we had him, Casey, and Allred. So not only are we, are, not only are they not throwing the ball, but now you have a another receiver that you have to worry about. So Curtis is kind of the underlooked one out of all of the group. Out of actually all six of the receivers, the three from Carr and three from Easton, because like I saw coming, it was like, well, um, Easton has two elite receivers, Carr has three, but like Curtis is an elite receiver. He just hasn't had the opportunity to show it. Like, um, East, Carr does have three elite receivers, and the fact that they've had they had the they've been able to prove their ranks having Leonard Kelly at quarterback, uh, coming up with big plays throughout the season whether it be, like, fat, um, getting the big catch in the Curtis game, the long catch. I think you, – I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. Or the uh, mm -hmm. touchdown catch in the Carver game uh, in the playoffs. Like, they've been able to make those bigger plays. But Easton has been able to make big plays, too, as far as the Casey, his two touchdowns against uh, Lakeshore, like the spectacular catches like that. But they've been able to do more of that just because they've been have able to get the ball more as far as the receiver. Like, they've been able to – have more receptions. Like, if you check the stats, I guarantee you, like, the amount of passes thrown, it's a very large gap. But, yeah, like, so as far as for now, I give Carr the slight edge just because of the fact uh, that they've been able to prove it more. But for people who did vote Carr and said that um, it was, like, a wide gap, I think when you um, watch his upcoming season and see – like the new like Eastern system and the way that they're going to play now, been able to basically spread the ball out more, be able to throw the ball more. I think you're going to not necessarily change your mind, but you're going to have a different mindset as, as into like, okay, maybe it's not as far as a gap as I thought. Maybe you could toss it up like either or like you were, um, like if you needed three receivers, you could, you would take Eastern group, you would take car group. Like I feel like in the end, the the vote was very close. Like, the, it was almost 50-50. And I think in the end, like, when you're looking at it, like, if you were to revisit this at the end of their senior seasons, I think you'll probably say the same thing, too. Like, it would be a 50-50% vote, percent vote on east side. Like, 
Um, you could take Carr, you could take Easton. Like it's really up in the air. But that's yeah. My yeah, and I came back to as I was looking at some of this through the the weekend and talking with some other people about it, including Josh Preston, who uh, gets to catch a lot of Easton and Carr games as, as he films Friday Night Football. Um, proven was a word that I kept coming back to. Uh, I, I joke. It feels like Aaron has been at Carr for uh, five, six years just because he started making plays for them at such an early age, and now he's really developed into a more well-rounded receiver, and he's going to be a really – or I guess at this point already is – a really top prospect for uh, for his class recruiting-wise around the state and, and around the country. Uh, you see Fat and all the offers he has in place. Danye is a guy that's going to play some, some college ball, and, and we saw them all do it at such a high level last year. And so I gravitate toward that, that consistency and, and that proven commodity. But at the same time, you mentioned there's, there's other factors that go into that. Uh, you talk about the, the difference in schemes, the difference in quarterbacks, the difference in, in running games at times. And there's, there's certainly a reason why Casey is committed to go play at Texas or, um, or you're going to have some, some college opportunities for, uh, for some of these other guys at, at Easton. So, I, I'm just looking forward to seeing him on a field here before very long. Um, and, and now they'll, the guys at Easton will have some, some new gloves to, to sport on a Friday night when they get a chance to link up with you. And it sounds like you'll be doing some more of these brackets here uh, coming up soon as well. And, and we'll have some more to talk about and, and kind of debate about a little bit. Yes, sir. Most definitely. Uh, not to discredit any of the guys who made the, the bracket, like in the, all 30 players who made it, like all of you are elite receivers in your own ways, all of you all can do something special. And when it came down to Easton and Carr, Carr has their elite group, Easton has their elite group. And, like, it's, it's a good debate, but, like like it was said, the best way to prove it is on the field. So, um, yes, and be on the lookout. Uh, more brackets are on the way, uh, possibly as soon as this, this Friday. So make sure y'all be on the lookout for that. And um, we will definitely be doing more of these crossovers. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Appreciate you. Um, just just like you mentioned, look out for some more brackets, uh, some more crossover reps. Uh, he's Anthony Rhodes Jr. from Anthony Rhodes Jr. Media from Louisiana Versailles, Algeria Roser.